So let's talk about this question. Which diagram best illustrates interactions between water molecules? The key thing to know about this is that water, or H2O, is composed of two hydrogens and one oxygen. And that means it has hydrogen bonding, which occurs between the water molecules. Now, between the water molecules, or intermolecular forces, you need to know which bit bonds with which. So the first thing is that it's called hydrogen bonding. So if it's got a hyd called hydrogen bonding, then therefore it must involve hydrogen. So therefore this question, or this answer rather, A, where oxygen is bonding to oxygen is wrong. What hydrogen does bond to during hydrogen bonding is that it bonds to the other oxygen in water. So the H binds to an O. And in fact, if we don't even do a covalent bond like that, it's more of an intermolecular force bond. So it's a weaker bond than that. So, if a H binds to an O, what is it in here? It's not this, it's not C, because the hydrogens are bonding to each other. Similarly in D, B is the correct answer, because you have the hydrogen here bonding with the oxygen over here with a intermolecular force bond here. IMF stands for intermolecular force. That's question one. Question two, what is the role of sulfur in living organisms? So you'll know that the main four elements that you need to know about are CHON, C-H-O-N, or carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, as well as oxygen. Sulfur is one of those other ones you also need to know about. Sulfur, is it used in the formation of proteins? Yes, it is, because it is in um, the two amino acids, cysteine and methionine. You don't need to know this, but just know that it's involved in protein synthesis and generation. How about the other two, or the other three? Formation of carbohydrates. Well, carbohydrates are usually made out of carbons, hydrogens and oxygens, but no other elements, no nitrogens, and definitely no sulfurs, so it's not a B. Formation of teeth. Well, teeth has got enamel on it, and enamel doesn't have any sulfur in it either. And how about D, the transmission of nerve impulses. So we'll know that, we'll go through the transmission of nerve pulses afterwards, but then if you have an axon along here, then you have the sodium which moves in, Na for sodium, as well as the potassium which moves out. And at the very end of your uh, at the end of your axon, then you also have calcium which can move in. But the bottom line is that these are all positively charged. And there is definitely no sulfur in there either, so it's not D. Therefore the correct answer is A. Question number three, which substance in prokaryotes contains sulfur? Very similar to the previous question, so after you've done that one it should be easy. It should be straightforward and let it see. DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid, and it, and it does have quite a few different things, carbons, hydrogens, oxygens, nitrogens, even phosphates due to the little um, part of the nucleotide, the little circle part of the nucleotide here. So this is a phosphate here. Aside from that, so it's not DNA, there's no sulfur there. Phospholipids. So lipids, you should know what it's composed of. You should know about um, a, a fatty acid as well as um, glycerol. And then um, the phospho stands for phosphate, obviously, so no sulfur there. And how about antibiotics? Antibiotics, possibly, but then um, there's no... The C is a better answer in this particular case. Question number four. Blood is a water-based transport medium. Which property of water makes it a good transport medium? So we need, we know about water and how it has a, say, a high specific heat capacity. It's got thermal properties, covalent properties, and as well as solvent properties as well. So what, though, makes it a significant transport medium? So the reason why it can transport things well is because things can dissolve in it. So that means that C is most likely the right answer, but let's look at the other ones. So a high specific heat capacity, that is correct. That is a 
property of water. However, it's got it doesn't really have much to do with as a transport medium. It's more about insulation and keeping warm. So it's not that one. How about transparency? Transparency, no. It's uh, while it still is a property of water. Transparency is more to do with the fact that sunlight can go through water. So if it can go through water, then plants which live underneath it can also photosynthesize as well. How about D? It has its greatest density at four degrees Celsius. So this has got nothing to do with with it being a transport medium, but more about the thermal property, similar to point A again. So in this case, the answer is C. 3.1, take 3 and cut. There are plenty more YouTube videos for you to check out, just click on the links below. If you'd like to download the questions, as well as the answers, make sure to like us on Facebook first. And finally, if you'd like to find out how I got a 7 in high-level IB biology, make sure to check out our website in the bottom right-hand corner. Thanks.